Good evening, I'm Rebecca Olmick. And I'm Justin Wheeler. Here's what's coming up next on Panther Vision. We do the problems for class. My problem is the teachers. <laughs> but is the class the problem? It's been 50 years, and this school is spreading the word of diversity through art. To try to bring these people together. And some students are making a splash. It's the end of the world as we know it. The world's supposed to end then. Do you feel fine? All that and more next on UWM Panther Vision. From the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee, this is UWM Panther Vision. A weekly newscast reported, written, and produced by students in the Department of Journalism and Mass Communication. And now, the news. Good evening. The numbers are alarming. 40% of UWM's students taking entry-level college math did not get a high enough grade to complete the requirement. It's an issue plaguing the nation, and we have team coverage tonight. We'll look to see if the problem has a common denominator, and how one university is trying to solve it. We'll also tell you President Obama's idea to stop the math proficiency slide. We'll start with a story from Norma Ortiz about UWM students struggling in the required college math class. Whether you love or hate it, math is a course that every student at UWM has to take. Intermediate algebra, also known as Math 105, is an entry-level math course most students take to satisfy their general requirements. The course is equivalent to high school algebra 2. Taking what some may consider a high school course in college may seem like an easy A, but that may not necessarily be the case. Today, these students in Math 105 are taking an exam. It can be seen as one of the most stressful days for new college students. Jonathan Williams is taking the class for the second time, but it's more confident he'll pass the class this time. I'm anticipating the A, like in all my classes, but with this, you know, Algebra 2 is kind of not my strong point, so I'm seeing possibly a C. Share of the math department, Richard Stockbridge, says that currently 2,000 students are taking Math 105. Only 60% are expected to complete the course with a sufficient enough grade to achieve the GER requirement, which is a C or better. We have excellent instructors that may provide lots of resources, provide lots of opportunities to learn, but, it, but the responsibility is, lies with the students for their, own, um, for, their, for their own learning and for their own education. Tom Stoisavlovich is a TA for Math 105. He says the grade is based on 350 points. 50 of those points rely on doing homework. Yeah, it does affect your overall ability to get the rest of those points, which is where a lot of that, you know, that failure rate, I think, is really coming from. Even with the high failure rate, the math department will continue to put forth the necessary help in order to help the students succeed. In Milwaukee, I'm Norma Ortiz for Panther Vision. So why do so many students have trouble adding Math 105 to their list of credits taken? The answer depends on who you talk to. Chris Verhein has the story as our team coverage continues. In high schools, only two years of math classes are required to graduate. As math teacher Olya Hively explains, Some students don't like math and they stop after the amount that they need. And then they get into college and they're like, oh great, math again, when they haven't done it for two to three years. But you don't always get to pick up where you left off. Placement tests determine what entry-level classes freshmen must take. I guess it's a lot of review for me since I was in calculus in high school. I went there for the tests and I don't know, apparently I didn't do too well. Over the past few years, an increasing amount of students are finding themselves in remedial math classes like this one. Professor Hu has taught these classes for seven years now. My feeling is this. Um, the student preparation may be not as good as it last few years. Um, or maybe it's something just else. Just not having study skills and maybe that's where we're lacking is the study skills. One college student says it's not the material that's difficult. My problem is the teachers. <laughs> I get a lot that no I can't understand because they do not speak fluent English. 
Another issue some high school students have is the jump from one course to its advanced placement component. Get this, it skipped to um, AP Calculus. It skipped Calculus and it didn't make sense. And we taught it in so many different ways and maybe that was the issue. Maybe we've just given them too much. In Milwaukee, I'm Chris Verheim for Panther Vision. Figuring out the root of the problem can be as difficult as the problem itself. The issue is so prevalent across the country that even President Obama made it a point in his campaign. In Milwaukee, a few days before the election, Obama said he wants to solve the problem by bringing in reinforcements. That's why I want to cut the growth of tuition in half. That's why I want to recruit 100,000 math and science teachers so our kids don't fall behind the rest of the world. And falling behind the rest of the world is a real problem. The Science and Engineering Readiness Index shows the U.S. is still lagging behind in math and science skills. The, their latest rankings show as only nine countries are worse than American students in math and science. The study of 34 countries was done in 2009. Wisconsin does pretty well nationally, ranking 14th in the U.S. Massachusetts tops the nation and Mississippi comes in last. The UW La Crosse will be developing a program designed to help improve math proficiency. Officials there are putting together an online program to help smooth the transition from high school math to college math. The program is being funded by a $50,000 grant from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Two Marquette students are recovering after being struck by a car last week. The two were standing on the corner of 17th and Wisconsin when a car struck them and then hit a parked car, fire hydrant, and light pole. Both are expected to survive, and the investigation into the crash continues. Marquette is mourning the death of an alumna. 29-year-old Jeannie Hayes, a news anchor in Rockford, Illinois, died two days after being diagnosed with an aggressive form of leukemia. She died after emergency brain surgery. Several Panther Vision alumni worked with Hayes and say she was a hard worker with a positive attitude, someone who always wore a smile on her face. For the first time, an atheist group has qualified for funding at UW-Madison. The group Atheists, Humanists, and Agnostics has been allocated nearly $70,000 in student fees. A student government spokesperson says there is no opposition as long as the group provides direct services to students. Madison's Chancellor, Student Council, and the Board of Regents must still approve the funding. UWM religion, religious organizations that requested segregated fee grants will fi find out whether they've been approved in about a month. The Student Association is reviewing the preliminary allocations for grant applications they received. The organizations expect to hear back from the essay regarding final grant amounts by mid-December. Some organizations are taking the time to reach out and help students. Panther Vision Steve Garrison has the story on what some religions are doing to promote student involvement. Faith and the Ivory Tower. With temptation everywhere and stress levels high, many students struggle with maintaining their faith. But for the devout, help is right around the corner. Across from the UWM Union is the United Christian Ministries. Today's free meal is mastacholi with a side salad. So we had a conversation one day. She said, I just don't know how to attract students. I said, well, yeah, you have two choices, food and music. And she chose food. Reverend Ellen McAllister has served at UCM since 2004. He helped start the free lunch program, originally called Hot Dog Days, because of the limited offerings. Any student that came on that day received a free hot dog. The menu has since expanded, and so has the program, with over 15 churches in southeast Wisconsin participating today. Reverend McAllister says despite the success of the free lunch program, it is still difficult to reach students. But I think communication is just very hard. We, students hear about us by word of mouth. Down the street from UCM is the Masala Noor, or Muslim Prayer Center. Student Abed Khatib says that the Prayer Center offers a much-needed community to the faithful. It's all about your atmosphere. That's what, I mean, that's what I've learned at my point in college now, you know, being a senior. It's, you know, when I'm with people that do bad things, I do bad things. When I'm people that do good things, I do good things. When I'm, people that choose, when I'm with people that choose not to pray, I don't pray. When I'm with people who choose to pray, I pray. Khatib is also involved in several student faith groups, including the Muslim Student Association and Maruf, where he volunteers as an outreach coordinator. And it's really hard for me to actually draw in the college crowd that always I'm too busy or who's going to be there or I can't give up my weekends for that. So we've been trying to make it more exciting for them, trying to get them, you know, more energized and also make them feel like this is their responsibility. This is, as a Muslim, we're ambassadors for our religion. Although prayer may come easy to students during finals week, for some it is an essential part of college life. 
In Milwaukee, I'm Steve Garrison for Panther Vision. UCM and the Muslim Prayer Center will continue their work in reaching out towards students. When we come back, we'll look at diversity at MATC. And tell you why some say the world is the end of the world is upon us. That and more when we come back. This is where powerful ideas lead to proven results. This is where you belong. Thanks for watching UWM Panther Vision, Judge Best Student Newscast by the Northwest Broadcast News Association. Panther Vision is produced by students in the Department of Journalism and Mass Communication in association with Milwaukee Area Technical College. UWM's Peck School of the Arts is celebrating its 50th anniversary. UWM will be commemorating the school through various events, programs, and activities on campus. The staff and students in the school will showcase several world premiere and signature programs for UWM and the general community. The Year of the Arts will recognize the Peck School's influence on the Wisconsin arts community. One senior in the Peck School of the Arts is hoping her work will help bring people together. As I found out, she's painting a picture of a better world. Melina Magnolia's paintbrush is drying out. She's got plenty of paint, but like many UWM senior art students, she's running low on time. But you're building a portfolio of work that's going to be hopefully helping you continue on as an artist after you know graduating. For all of her life, Melina has used painting to express herself. Now, she's painting with a purpose using her art to commemorate members of Milwaukee's queer community. Uh, within the community of um, queer folks, that there's a lot of diversity and they seem to be so segregated because the city is so segregated. So this is also a means to try to bring these people together and to show the diversity of the queer folks in Milwaukee um, instead of just the stereotypes, the yeah. stereotypical um, flamboyant gay people. Before yeah, picking up the brush, you know, you Magnolia sits down with her subjects first. I talk to them about things that shape them um, and how to properly commemorate them. And I don't want to represent them in a way that is not them. Connecting her work to the community means getting her name out into the galleries. Showing up at galleries, uh, shaking hands with people, having a business card, having a website, constantly being visible. Melina steps into the sight of the public this spring when she is set to graduate. In Milwaukee, I'm Justin Wheeler for Panther Vision. Melina and her colleagues will have their senior year artwork on display this spring. You can visit UWM's Innova Galleries in Kenilworth Square East, the Theater Building, and the Student Union. We told you earlier in our newscast about some alarming numbers when it comes to math and science. And here's another. UWM has the second lowest four-year graduation rate in the UW system. Less than 15% of students graduate within four years. In fact, 38% are taking six years to graduate. 
UWM does provide a four-year guarantee contract, but not many students have signed it. A divided MATC board of directors has agreed to early contract negotiations with some unions, but that's not sitting well with one Republican lawmaker. The college does not normally start negotiations until five months before contracts expire, but the board is moving negotiations up while the controversial Act 10 labor laws tied up in court appeals. The move angered Republican State Senator Glenn Grothman of West Bend. Grothman called the MATC board a bunch of labor union hacks, saying the board doesn't care about students nor about the business community. The board vote to open negotiations was five to four. MATC's campus is one of the most diverse in the state with nearly an even mix between white and minority students. In tonight's MATC report, Tom Bride tells us about some of the benefits and challenges of such a multicultural institution. MATC is an incredibly diverse college. Minorities make up 46% of the school's enrollment. This diversity has its benefits. America has been famously described as a melting pot. This cliche is proven correct every day on the campuses of his universities and colleges. MATC student James Sewell. You like know, meet people that you know in class of people that's older, like at 40, 30, zero. First time college student Edward Taylor. That exact reason that some people might consider it bad. It being different, people having different opinions, different ages. I have a guy in my class who's got to be in past his 50s, 60s maybe. And if it wasn't for the fact that he's got white hair, he would be no different from me with maybe a little bit more experience in photography. I also spoke with DeAndre Gladney. To meet new people, see what everybody's about from, from other races, other than your own. So it's a big up. Some of them, they are, could be they are your grandkids at the age. So it's fun. And uh, the most is uh, very motivating. For MATC, I'm Tom Bride. Over the next eight years, the National Center for Education Statistics expects enrollment of students over the age of 25 to rise by 20 percent. Tom Momberg is here now with the weather. Tom, good to see you. How's it going? That's pretty good. How about you, Justin? Rebecca? Oh, pretty good. So, Tom, uh, it's a little warmer than I thought it was going to be. I thought we were going to have to grab our winter jackets for a while. Yeah, it's a little... A little chillier this morning. It was uh, a little cloudy overhead. Um, I think that's going to continue, but we are going to see low 50s today as our high. So I think, I think you'll be happy. Um, this week, uh, winter isn't on its way just yet. Um, we're looking at a little bit warmer weather coming up this week. Uh, mild weekend weather might cool down a little bit, but count the things you're thankful for because. Thanksgiving, it's supposed to be pretty nice. Uh, current conditions, it's pretty cloudy out. Temperature fluctuating between 47 and 50 degrees. Uh, dew point at 38 degrees and 30 inches of pressure. I don't know if we're going to see rain. Probably about a 20% chance today. High of 53, low tonight of 40 degrees. Um, uh, to, uh, last night we saw 37 degrees in Rhinelander. Out west a little more, it was a little warmer. Eau Claire got 41 degrees and La Crosse 45. Here in Milwaukee, it, um, low 40s. Uh, today the highs are uh, 53 degrees in Milwaukee. Hopefully we'll see that later today. Out west we have a little warmer. Eau Claire 55, Madison 57, La Crosse 56. Um, tonight, low of 43 degrees. Wind south southwest at eight miles per hour, uh, mostly cloudy. I think most of that is uh, west of us. Uh, in Minnesota, there's a storm. Hopefully, that'll start dissipating by later in the week. But we should see quite a bit of clouds tomorrow. 54 degrees is the high, 42 degrees low. Um, hitting on this Wednesday, right before our long Thanksgiving break, 56 degrees is the high, partly cloudy. Hopefully, a lot of that'll start to clear up as we head into uh, the week ahead. Our turkey day, happy, happy turkey day, 59 degrees. Hopefully we'll uh, see that happening and then it should cool down throughout the weekend, but hopefully nice weather for football and um, beautiful day with family. Yeah, it's good to hear that there'll be some warm weather for that uh, Thanksgiving football game. It's tough to come in when the weather is and you got frostbite on your hands after that game. Well, no one likes frostbite. Yeah. <laughs> This year's winter solstice also marks the end of the ancient Mayan calendar. But does that also mean no spring semester? 
Reporter Tyler Berg has the story. Take a look around, and you wouldn't guess the end of the world is just over a month away. The last cycle of the Mayan Long Count calendar ends this December on the 21st. And while 2012 has long been associated with the world ending, biology major Esther Sheltham isn't buying it. Um, well, I've heard lots of stuff. I actually took a Native American history class and kind of like we studied it, but basically the world's supposed to end then, but it's really not. Other theories connected to the 2012 phenomenon include astrological events like a cataclysmic galactical alignment. Dawn Erb is an assistant professor for the Department of Physics. She says there are much more important things to worry about. Nobody in astronomy thinks that anything significant is going to happen on this day. There's no reason at all. So if nothing apocalyptic is sure to happen on the 21st, what will? I might, I might have gotten invited to like an end of the world barbecue on Facebook or something like that. But if you are a believer, be sure to let Habib Abdallah know before you head for the hills. You think you're going to die? Give me your car, give me your house. I mean, I don't think it's an end, man. In Milwaukee, I'm Tyler Berg for Panther Vision. Theories trying to legitimize the end of the world include maximum peak sunspots and global climate change. These are, however, theories, and most have been widely dismissed by academia. Coming up next, UWM is making a splash in the Horizon League. And he's keeping a list and checking it twice. We'll see who's been naughty or nice. This is where powerful ideas lead to proven results. This is where you belong. Thanks for watching UWM Panther Vision, Judge Best Student Newscast by the Northwest Broadcast News Association. Panther Vision is produced by students in the Department of Journalism and Mass Communication in association with Milwaukee Area Technical College. UWM teams are wrapping up their seasons. And basketball season has just begun. Adam Gallo joins us now with sports. Adam? The UWM men's basketball team started this season off strong with just one loss to South Carolina. Guard to play defense. There's your three. The miss. Demetrius grabs the rebound. Saturday, the Panthers took on Davidson at home, winning 73-68. to Junior Jordan Aaron led the team with 23 points to knock off the NCAA tournament team. The team is in Arkansas today versus Little Rock. Tip-off is at 7 p.m. After tonight's game, the Panthers will head to Mexico next weekend for a Hoops for Hope Classic. There they will face off against Jacksonville and Ryder. The women's basketball team is also starting their season off on the right foot. Wednesday's win over Western Michigan was a big game for sophomore Ashley Green. Green dominated the floor, setting career highs of 20 points and 14 rebounds. The Lady Panthers have a 10-day break before playing in San Juan shootout in Puerto Rico next weekend. They'll take on nationally ranked Georgia Tech and Eastern Kentucky. UWM has 18 students gliding around the ice. The hockey club has been active for four seasons and practices at the Pettit National Ice Center. 
UWM's hockey club plays in the American Collegiate Hockey Association with rules similar to those of the NCAA. The record is 4-8 and eight and their next home game is against Wheaton College. The men's and women's swim teams are practicing for their ultimate prize. Panther Vision, Vision's Norma Ortiz shows us how the Panthers are hoping to make a splash in the Horizon League Championships. Practice makes perfect, a concept the UWM men's and women's team uphold. With many wins such as the 200 freestyle relay by the women's team and the 500 freestyle by the men's team, right now the swim team has one thing on their mind. But as a team, we know that our goal is to win Horizon League championships and to do things there. And we know as, like, we have to be top eight, we have to be top 16 at Horizon League. We have to work together to do that. Women's team captain Diana Deal is very happy with the team's performance this season. It's been really exciting to see the program take a turn since my freshman year here. Um, freshman year, we didn't even do that well at conference. I mean, it was well, but seeing uh, coming off of last year with conference champion title, it's exciting and it's new and it's been good. Men's team captain Caleb Stanwell couldn't agree more. It's been great. Uh, just a great team, great team atmosphere. Uh, we're really a tight-knit group here, so we love it, yeah. The Horizon League Championships begin February 28th in Chicago, Illinois. In Milwaukee, I'm Norma Ortiz for Panther Vision. The swim team travels to Iowa City for the Hawkeye Invitational next weekend. The University of Illinois at Chicago will host the Horizon League Championships in late February. The cross-country teams have one more hurdle to jump before wrapping up their season. The teams will compete in the NCAA Championships Wednesday in Kentucky. Last week, the men's team took 26th place in the Great Lakes Regional. Sophomore men's runner Louis Glotfelty posted a personal record of 33 minutes and 42 seconds. The women's team finished in 31st place. UW-Milwaukee's top five women's runners all finished within one minute of each other. That's it for sports. Back to you, Rebecca and Justin. Thanksgiving is Thursday, which means Christmas is right around the corner. But at MATC, it's been Christmas since September. MATC's Brandy Bond has the story. Hi, I'm Brandy Bond, here to take you behind the scenes of Letters to Santa, over a 40-year-old tradition here in Milwaukee. Letters to Santa is a children's series uh, where Santa Claus reads kids' letters that they have written for him and the gifts that they want, uh, combined with the series of packages that are produced by my classmates. We, we all started um, maybe a couple months ago, we started the idea of um, the set. We came together and we kind of had a list of ideas of how we wanted the set to look like and then we had some, we each kind of had some drawings, the layouts, you know, and then we kind of combined everybody. And, you know, the last few months it has been very Christmassy and uh, I like it, you know. It's uh, Christmas for a couple months and I like winter, I like Christmas, you know, it's been a prolonged good experience. <laughs> Long. Like, I always complain every year about, I see, think Christmas is just starting earlier and earlier each year. And this year it started in September for me, just the planning stages and I don't know if it will affect my holiday spirit, but Christmas is a good holiday. I don't complain if it lasts too long, I suppose. Students here perform every job and even the talent. Yeah, I'm an elf. I'm an elf at the North Pole. I work every day with Santa Claus. We came here to America in a sleigh to land on the roof, and now we're here in Magic TV Land Studio to make television show. Every year I get down here, especially for this program, Letters to Santa. So behave yourself and, and do what mom and dad are telling you to do because we're watching. Boy, that looks like a lot of fun. Letters to Santa will be airing December 17th through the 21st and also Christmas Eve on the 24th at 5.30 p.m. I'm Brandi Bond with the MATC Report. Ho, 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 Merry Christmas. Thanks for joining us for this edition of Panther Vision. You can watch us anytime on Time Warner's Wisconsin On Demand, Channel 411. You can also see us on Time Warner Channel 14 and AT&T Channel 99 at 5 o'clock on Wednesdays and Fridays. 